Just last week, my daughter Kaya received an email from one of our customers explaining that their beloved 300D had died and that this person wanted to give us the car if we were interested. They said they had it checked over and the mechanic explained it was probably a bad piston, but the engine was just done for. And of course, she's owned the car for years and Kaya got really intrigued and said, well, sure, we'd be interested in having this car. Do you have a name for it? And they said, well, the pr previous owner named it Digby, and we're laughing at each other thinking, you know, we used to have a car that we called Digby 20 years ago, one that we fixed up and sold. The odds of it being the same car, we said, nah, it can't be, but it's the same color. So when the car arrived yesterday, they gave us all the manuals, the paperwork, all the receipts of all the work's been done. My daughter opened up this particular three ring binder and right in the front is what we typed up to sell the car and the date is March 1999. That's 20 years ago, can you believe it? So Digby has returned home. Now I'm not ready to give up on Digby, okay? I've had a number of Mercedes come in here where the owners have been told they're, they're dead or dying. So we're gonna do some exploratory work here. Maybe we can save Digby. It's nice to have Digby back after 20 years. What I'm gonna be looking for here is any type of catastrophic engine failure. So I'm just gonna get in the car and we're gonna see if it turns over. You know, if we have a thrown timing chain or something, it won't turn over, it'll clunk. So I'll just click the starter a couple times. Well, it wants to fire even without glowing it a little bit. So I'm gonna let it glow up. And actually fired up quite quickly, but you can see it looks like it's missing on one or two cylinders here. But look at this, I see something right away that really concerns me. No oil pressure, no oil pressure. I'm gonna shut this thing down immediately. I'm also picking up a lot of smoke. I'm sure some of you know why I shut that engine down so quickly. Running any engine without oil pressure is bad, but running an old diesel without oil pressure, even for a short while, is very bad. So obviously the first thing I'm going to check is, is there any oil in the engine? You know, I've probably run across a half a dozen old diesels that ran out of oil, and that's almost sure death for these engines, but we've got oil so now the mystery continues you know what happened did we lose the oil pump uh is there something wrong with the gauge i'm going to do some more inspection work here before i start the engine up again because i'm not going to start it up until i can find this problem i want to take a quick look at the oil pressure line see if there's a problem with that and i'm looking down here at the oil filter housing look at that the oil pressure line is gone for the gauge somebody's put a hex plug in that oil filter housing oh my word after discovering the missing oil pressure line i feel pretty comfortable about going ahead and running the engine at least from some initial tests here what i want to do now is very quickly try to determine which cylinder is missing. If there's a steady miss on one or two cylinders, I need to know that because that's where I'll start my diagnostics. So the quickest way to do that on these old diesels is to start the engine up and I'm going to crack one fuel injector line at a time while the engine's idling. And if there's no change in sound, then I know that particular cylinder is misfiring. Oh, number one is firing. Just start it up again. Number two is firing. I could idle this up a little bit to try to keep it running, but this is okay. Look at that. 
that. No change. Now I am getting fuel there, which is a good sign as far as the fuel delivery, but number three is not firing. Let's try number four. Number four is firing. And now let's try number five. Look at that. Number five is not firing, but I am getting fuel delivery. I'm going to smell the fuel to make sure it's diesel fuel. Okay, it's not gasoline. All right, so we've got we've got issues with number three and number five. So I know some of you have been around these diesels, kind of know what's going to be next, but uh, I'm going to pull number three and number five. We're going to put a compression tester on there and very quickly test compression. Now the previous owner told me the mechanic told her that it had a bad piston, so compression is going to show that right away, maybe. I'm saying maybe because I'll explain more later, but I want to find out right away what's happening as far as compression on number three and number five. I've removed the fuel injector, number five cylinder. I've hooked up my compression tester. Now I've got my friend inside the car who's going to turn the engine over while I hold down on the stop button. I don't want the engine starting, nor do I want it squirting fuel through some of these injector return hoses. Okay, I think we've got it pushed down. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, hold it. You can see that fuel shutoff isn't completely working, but I've got 300 PSI. Now that's not that great a compression, but it's good enough for the engine to fire. Let's take a look at number three. Okay, we're ready to test number three. I'm gonna hold down on this engine stop again as hard as I can. Okay, go ahead and turn it over. Ouch. So I'm sure some of you are thinking or asking yourselves, well, that doesn't look that great, but what does it really mean? Well, we're going to look into this a little further in part two.